Friday. Sharp Customs. Share, like, subscribe. You know the routine. And yes, we are rolling. You can hear that loud noise in the background. Uh, we're, we're, okay. I'm not going to say we're pouring aluminum. We're going to attempt to pour some aluminum. Uh, already did some today. Probably should have did the video then. I think what we'll do, the aluminum is ready in the crucible. Uh, it's over there in the wood stove, cooking as we speak. I'm gonna grab a glove. I'm gonna dump that aluminum. I'll quench it. We'll shut all the noise off so you can hear me properly. And I'll show you what we're doing. Has to do with the uh, quarter scale stuff, I suppose you could say. Let's do it. Follow me, don't get too close. You could get burned. Burned is no fun. Let's get rid of that noisy thing. Move my uh, porch stands out of the way. You know, this is kind of, it's kind of dangerous. Look at how red that is. Probably a thousand degrees. I got my mold that I'm pouring right here on the top of the stove. I'm just gonna go for it. Pour, 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 pour. Don't stop. Right to the top. Okay, well, that was a bust. It was a bust. I know why it was a bust. Um, so I have an outer cylinder, four pieces, it's clamped. I have an inner cylinder. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to make is I'm trying to make aluminum tubing uh, to create a different style alloy rim. As you can see, we didn't fill the mold. It dropped out and I'll move this piece in the middle and <laughs> you can see where it went. It went in there. It escaped. It got underneath. Uh, yeah, that kind of sucks, but you got to see the attempt. Um, I don't even know if we're going to touch that. That is blistering hot. Um, you know what? Maybe we will. Maybe we will. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do here. <clears throat> it's hot. It's, I can still see that it's red. Uh, never mind red. It's the aluminum is still soft. It's so hot. We'll just get her up off the stove. I'm not even gonna try and touch it. Just maneuver it such a way. Oh yeah, leaving the bottom. Well, the center is not even supposed to be there. You can see where, right there. Right there, you can see where it leaked through. My center, my center mold obviously had just a little bit of a flaw there, enough room for the aluminum to escape into the center. Um, I don't even think I'm going to touch this. I was going to throw it in my quench bucket, uh, but I think we'll just leave it there for now and we'll move on. Because uh, like I said, I did one earlier today. It actually worked. So we'll just move on to that take this glove off. So, the idea is to create a aluminum tube. Yes, I could buy some. Uh, I have not sourced it yet. Um, pretty much what I need is I need four and a half OD by about three eighths thick to create um, what I'm about to show you. Now, that's just the outer part of the rim. Uh, 
you have to make a center insert to bolt to the hubs. So basically I made I made one of these yesterday. Okay, now I drill a hole in the center. Um, these four dots represent the bolt pattern on the Rakos. Uh, you can see I've got it scribed around the outside. So I drill the center out. I have a half inch bolt uh, and a bushing with a nut that I put on there. Clamp it, throw it in the lathe, spin it round. Now, you're probably wondering, well, you know, so these points, they stay. They stay, and there should be another scribe ring around there, which is an outer ring. So once this is completely round, I have to cut out these sections right here. And what I do is I drill a hole there, and I drill a hole there. And I used, believe it or not, I used the wood scroll saw. I uh, did not change the blade. Use the same blade that's been in here uh, since I got this thing. And on slow speed, like that, it actually cuts this pretty damn good. Like pretty tight to the line, fairly fast. So I created one. I wanted to quench that piece of aluminum, but it's, it's garbage. Uh, it'll get cut up. It'll get melted down again. Um, so we'll come over to the lathe. Let's just assume we had the piece and we spent about an hour spinning it with a lot of uh, with a lot of shrapnel, a lot of shavings. Probably I don't know what's back there. There's a lot. There's a lot of shavings. But uh, but basically, yeah. We could pretend like we did it and we're just, you know, we're cleaning it up now. I'm not going to do that. That thing's loud. Everything's loud. So, uh, let the camera just look at it. I'm going to go grab something. I'm going to grab a, a boot for it, let's just say. Here's the boot. This is the blue boot I made out of the... Uh, EVA foam. Uh, it has been on a rim. Now, basically, Rako rims are normally one piece. This one I decided I would do, or they're two pieces, I mean. Sorry, I got that wrong. Rako rims, the plastic ones, they bolt together, two pieces. Um, put a piece in here, put a piece in there, bolted together, blah, blah, blah. I know. Um, I wanted to make a one piece alloy with the center insert. So, I'm gonna stick the boot on it. Uh, this is kinda tough. I gotta muscle it a wee bit. Actually works pretty good. Now you probably could put some glue on here. Uh, it fit better, fit better when the aluminum was snug, or I mean hot. I gotta take it out. Because this one is finished, it's not the prettiest. This was kind of the, the whole experimental uh, thing. There we go. We got the boot on. Uh, I would have to say, look at I can spin the foam. So I probably put a little bit of glue to help hold the foam. Uh, I got a few more ideas to turn the foam into rubber. Um, you know, maybe we'll show that in another video. But here it is with the insert. Now the insert, I don't think you can get that out. Uh, basically, I made this diameter. Just a wee bit smaller, and while the alloy was still hot from machining, I pressed that center in. Now, ultimately, um, I suppose I could put some very small fasteners from the outside of the rim into the, uh, the center piece of it. Um, 
but I would say the ultimate is for me to get my ass in gear, make a little extra money, and buy myself a TIG welder, and then that way on the inside, I could just put some small TIG welds, and that would hold the, uh, the center plate in, but that's, I don't know, that's more uh, sports car type, I wanted to do a five star, um, but unfortunately the Reiko cars, they have a four stud pattern, I suppose I could make new hubs, kind of go down that road, make them five stud, uh, for now, you know, these are pretty good, I'm not going to continue to pour aluminum uh, to make these alloys for my cars, I'm going to source, like I say, some tubing. And as far as the center plate, I'm going to try and work on possibly getting a hold of a CNC that can cut this stuff for me. Because that little center plate on that saw, you know, laying it out, drilling the holes. I haven't even, look at this, I haven't even cut the full center out of it yet to fit over the hub. So, that being said, I think it's pretty cool looking. Uh, as far as the foam, I can cut the foam different to make it fit tighter also. That's another option. Um, hopefully in the next video we'll have a rubber coated foam tire. There's, I've come across about one, two, three, maybe four ways that we could do that. Uh, gonna start with the easiest way. Uh, maybe we'll put that in the next video, you know, so stay tuned. And that's our show for tonight, man. Freaking Sharp Customs. Share, like, subscribe. Love you all. Peace. I'm out.